Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited about introducing our brand new interactive die, Give It A Whirl. This die helps you create an interactive card and as you give it a whirl or spin it around, it has an awesome surprise underneath. We also have a really great Give It A Whirl scalloped add-on that gives you different and fun design opportunities. And we have a Give It A Whirl template that helps you line things up and do other cool techniques that we're gonna be showing you all throughout this video. And so here is a look at what a Give It A Whirl card does. As you give it a whirl, you can see the amazing surprise underneath. Oh my goodness, I mean, these cards just make me smile. They are so much fun to create and they are so much fun to give people. They are just so cool. Look at that spinning action. It is just awesome. You can also create cool things like a color surprise like this card. There's so many awesome things you can do. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to put a Give It A Whirl together. And then we're gonna be creating these three different cards with three different techniques showing you how to do really, really awesome things with the Give It A Whirl. Here, this one is so much fun because you have the little scene on the front and then the surprise of the garden growing on the inside. I mean, there are so many cool things you can do with this and I cannot wait to see what you guys are gonna create with it. So let's go ahead and get started and check it out. Here are all of the pieces included in the Give It A Whirl. And first up here, we have our main base circle piece. Then we have our moving circle, and we're gonna die cut two of those. This is the connector piece. And then here you can see the tab for the Give It A Whirl, and we also have a little decorative piece that has an arrow that lets the recipient know what to do. We also have a grass and a hillside, and that hillside could be dirt, sand, snow, grass, anything in your imagination, and that's gonna help you decorate your Give It A Whirl. But first we need to talk about that connector piece. We're actually going to be die cutting the connector piece from some copy paper or printer paper, the thin paper that you put through your printer. Now, if you happen not to have any printer paper at home, don't worry because I bet you have a post-it and the non-sticky part of a post-it is also the perfect type of paper for the connector piece. So you could use your printer paper or the non-sticky part of a post-it for the connector piece. And then for that little tab there, you're going to want to use 100 pound cardstock because we want it to be nice and sturdy for the recipient to pull. So here you can see the connector piece is copy paper and that tab, we're gonna do it out of 100 pound cardstock. And we'll be going over this again as we learn how to put the whole Give It A Whirl together. Now here are the pieces for the Give It A Whirl scalloped add-on. And you'll see that it has a main base scallop circle piece, and then it has two different hillsides. So it has a grassy hillside and a simple hillside. And what this scalloped add-on does is it gives you a bunch of different design options for your Give It A Whirl card. So you can see all of those different grasses and hills. You can see the main base circle piece and the main base scallop piece. The other thing that's really cool is you always are gonna put the Give It A Whirl together in the same way, but you could use any of the grasses, hills, or bases depending on what look you want. And we'll be showing you how to create all sorts of different Give It A Whirls with different looks and different pieces in this video. But first we're gonna take a quick look at the Give It A Whirl template. And what the template does is it helps you with placement, it gives you the opportunity to do cool inking techniques, and we're gonna be showing you a ton of those in this video today. And you can see that the template has a square with a circular opening, and then it has the circle that fits inside of it. And then here you'll be able to see exactly how these line up onto both the main base circle piece and the main base scallop circle piece. So you'll see that you can line that right up there. It's got a little etch line that's a nice guide to help you line it up with that stitching on the circle and then you can use the inside circle as a mask as well and you'll see that both of the styles of base pieces whether it's the circle that comes in the original set or the scallop circle that comes in the add-on work with the template so I love that the template works with it no matter what style or design you are going for with your give it a whirl and so now it's time to learn how to put the Give It A Whirl die together. And it is so much fun. I mean, you're gonna wanna give it a whirl. It is awesome. And so here you can see we have a bunch of the pieces cut from the Give It A Whirl set. So it's coming from that original set. You can see the die here. And we've die cut the main base piece. We have two of the moving pieces. And then we've also die cut the connector piece out of the copy paper, of course, and the tab pieces as well. But we're gonna put that main base piece away. We're gonna work just on our two moving circles and also so on that little connector piece that we have cut from copy paper. Now, for right now, we're not working with any design on this, right? Because we're just learning how to put it together with nice, plain colors of cardstock. So I added a little design here, a smiley face and the word front, because the front and back do matter as you put the Give It A Whirl together. 
Now the other moving piece doesn't actually get any design. It's gonna be hidden in the back and we're actually gonna put it aside for now as we work on the front piece and the connector piece. And here's a little close up at that connector piece. You can see the die has a little score line in the middle and that's gonna create a score line that we're gonna be folding along with this connector piece. And as a little reminder, we have cut this connector piece out of some copy printer paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold along that line just like that, fold back on it just like that, and I'll just crease it a little bit with my finger. Then we're gonna take our moving circle piece and we're gonna flip it over so that we don't see our design at all. We are looking at the back. And you'll see here we have this little folded piece and there's the folded side and the open side and we're gonna be working with the folded side. And I wanna show you exactly where we're gonna adhere it before we actually do. So here you can see that there's the cut line on the moving circle. We're going to be adhering that right along that cut line edge. And in the middle of the cut line, just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you're gonna kind of put that right in the middle and you'll see it's gonna go right along that cut line. And it's gonna be super, super easy to do. Now we need to add some adhesive to this connector piece. So on one side of the piece, we're gonna cover the whole whole thing with tape runner. I like using tape runner, dot runner for this because it makes it really, really easy to cover the whole thing. And you'll see if you have any extra, you can easily rub it away. So you'll see that this whole thing is covered the entire side of it. So now that we have it covered in adhesive, we're gonna take this thing and we're gonna line it up with that cut line and we're gonna center it in that cut line. Once again, just kind of eyeballing it. And we're gonna layer that right on there and it's gonna be right up against that edge. So see, we're gonna push down and secure that in place. And now you can see as I pick it up that it's just on the one side of that cut line lined up right to the edge. Now we're gonna bring back the other moving circle, the one that's completely plain, and we're gonna take some tape runner and we're gonna cover that connector piece again. And you'll see as I cover the whole piece, cause it's really important for the whole thing to have the tape runner on it, I actually got some tape runner onto the moving circle. Well, that's why I like using the dot runner because I can just take my finger and rub it away when there's too much. And then I can just bring my tape runner back and layer a little bit more on to make sure my whole connector piece is there. Then the next thing that we need to do is just stack the plain moving circle right on top of that connector piece. And what's great is these are really, really easy to line up because they both have the cut line. So you're just gonna kind of stack them together, make sure that they're both perfectly lined up, and then you'll just press down and the connector piece is what's gonna secure these two circles together. Now, once I have them secured together, I like to take my bone folder and just really press down really well to make sure that that adhesive is really attached because the only thing connecting those two circles is that connector piece. And then here is a look at what that connector piece looks like, kind of sandwiched between the two circles, just like that. And now we can take this and flip it over and start working on the front of this moving piece. And we're gonna take out our little tab piece. And remember, we've die cut this from 100 pound cardstock because that adds some nice sturdiness to it. Now I'm using a little highlighter here to show you exactly where I'm gonna be putting my adhesive. And it's all on that kind of right side of this tab. So I'm just gonna cover that whole part with the blue highlighter with adhesive. And now I'm gonna attach it to the right side of the circle. And you'll see it's the piece that kind of flaps up, you can see there. So we're gonna layer that onto the right side of that cut line. And you'll see that that tab piece has a curve on it. And that curve is gonna line up with the curve of the circle. And the edge of the moving piece is gonna line up right with the edge of the tab. So it's gonna look just like that. And then the last step for this moving piece is to add the little decorative piece. So this is a little decorative cover for the tab and you can die cut it out of any color or pattern paper that's gonna coordinate with your design. And I love that it has the little arrow because that's the, gonna tell the recipients what to do. Now that our moving piece is all done, we can finally add it to the main base piece and create our interactive mechanism, which is my favorite part. So here's our main base circle piece and our moving piece, and we are gonna flip them both over so that we're looking at the back of both of them. And you'll see on our main base piece that there is a cut line there. And we're actually gonna take that tab and we're gonna feed it through the cut line. So you see, I'm kind of popping the tab out some, and we're just gonna feed it right through that cut line, just like that. Once you start to do that, you can flip the whole thing over. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to guide the paper through with your fingers. And you can see I'm not pulling the tab, I'm actually just guiding it through with my fingers. And you'll notice it'll get a little bit stuck and things like that, that's okay. We're training the paper what to do. So now that I've gone through one way, I'm gonna go through the other way. You can see that it's already starting to move better. And then I'm gonna make sure to feed the paper through again so that I'm seeing the front of my design. So it looks just like this.
Then we can flip it over and we can start working on adhering it to our card. And we're gonna be doing that with some foam strips. So I love these 3D foam strips. They are the perfect size for this awesome Give It A Whirl card. So we're gonna be using these three foam strips, but of course you could use um, some foam squares cut into little pieces and kind of layer them around. So whatever foam you have will work, but I happen to really love these foam strips because it makes it nice and easy. Then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be attaching these foam strips so that the top of the foam strip is going to line up with that stitched line. And so whether you're using foam strips or even little cut up foam squares, you're gonna make sure that the top of the foam piece is lining up with that stitch line. And there you can see how I'm just kind of guiding this piece around and lining it up with the stitch line so that the top of the foam piece lines up with that stitching. Then we're gonna take one piece and just guide it all around and we'll peel it off. And it takes about two and a half of these foam strips. So we're gonna layer this around just like that, lining it up with that stitch line. You'll see I'm just kind of guiding the foam around. Once again, the top of the foam is lining up with the stitch line. And then here you'll see we're gonna have kind of our half piece here. So we'll do the same thing where we're lining it up. And then once we hit the other part of the foam circle we've created, all we need to do is just take our scissors and we can just trim that piece of foam right off just like that. Now you're gonna peel up the liner paper on all three of these foam strip pieces. And then this is what's going to be attaching it to the card. And by using the foam, it's gonna give the height needed for our mechanism to be moving around in the background. So here I have just a little card base here. I'm gonna flip this whole piece over and I'm just gonna attach it right onto my card, just like that. That's all you need to do. Once you have it in perfect placement for your design, you just press down and secure it. And now you have an awesome give it a whirl mechanism. I mean, look at this. I just love giving it a whirl. It's just the cutest, most fun thing. I can't tell you how much fun these are to create. They just make me smile so much. So now that we've made a Give It A Whirl card, it's time to make one with the Give It A Whirl scalloped add-on. And the awesome thing is you make it in the exact same way. So we have the moving piece, just like before. We've got our scallop base piece. We're flipping them both over. And then we're gonna take that tab, just like we did before. And we're gonna feed the tab through the cut line in the main base scallop circle piece. As we feed that through, we're gonna flip it over to the front and then just kind of use our fingers to help guide the paper through. Once again, we're training the paper what to do. So I like to guide it all the way through to the front and then I like to guide it so that it goes all the way back in. And then once I have that, we can pull it all the way up to the front again so that we'll have it nice and secure in place to put our adhesive on the back. So we're gonna flip this whole thing over. And once again, we're gonna be using those 3D foam strips to add our adhesive. And we're gonna be adding it so the top of the foam strip lines up with that stitching line. And we're just gonna kind of curve it around and attach it down. So we've done one there. And now we're gonna work with our second foam strip piece and we're gonna layer that all the way around. And the cool thing is, is that I saved that little half foam strip from my other one that I created and I can use that on this scalloped add-on to fill in the rest that I need. So I love kind of being able to reuse my foam like that. The next step is to remove the liner paper on all of these foam pieces, which I'm gonna do now. And I'm also gonna show you that once you remove the liner paper, if you ever feel like some of the foam is a little too close to the circle, which I had there, I just push it back with my finger. So I just make sure that none of the foam is touching that moving circle. And I just kind of play around with it. And it's really easy to move with your finger like that once you've peeled off the liner paper. And then just like we did before, we're gonna take out a card base here. And then all you need to do is just layer it wherever you want on your design and press down. And now you can give it a whirl and you can have this awesome interactive card. It is so cool. I am so in love with this. I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. And now here you can see a comparison between the scalloped add-on and the original Give It A Whirl. Both are awesome and we're gonna be creating both really soon in this video. But right before that, I wanted to show you all the cute little grasses and hills that are included in both the Give It A Whirl and the Give It A Whirl add-on. And what's really great about these is that you can use them on either style of main base piece, whether it's the circle or the scallop circle. So you can mix and match these in any which way depending on the design that you would like for your card. And so I love that there's a simple hillside, that there's a grassy hillside, that there's a plain hillside. I mean, there's so many cool ways to create and it's time to start creating with this Give It A Whirl now and I cannot wait. So we're gonna be creating three cards showing you a ton of different techniques and how to use that template too. 
We're going to start off by decorating that moving piece. And on the moving piece, you want to make sure it's nice and flat. So you can stamp things on it, you can heat emboss, you can hot foil, but you're not going to want to put any die cuts on this piece so that it's nice and flat so that it can move really, really well through the Give It A Whirl. And don't worry, you'll be able to put all your die cut images on that main base piece, and we'll show you that in just a bit. And so we are gonna start off by actually hot foiling. And this is a brand new hot foil plate called Sending Rainbows and it's so super cute. We're gonna add it to our platform here, press the timer button. It's gonna flash for about a minute. Once that timer green light is solid, we can hot foil it. So we're gonna use this awesome rainbow foil over this. We can layer that face down onto our hot foil plate. Then we can add our cardstock on there. And then the two plates that the machine comes with. Then we're gonna take this whole thing, we're gonna pop it off the platform and we're gonna run it through the die cut machine, just like that. Then once we run it through the die cut machine, this is my favorite part, it's like the big reveal. So we're gonna lift up our paper and then we'll peel back that foil and you'll see just how gorgeous this is. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. So one of the cool things about this hot foil plate is that we designed it so that it would fit the new Give It A Whirl interactive dies. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the small moving circle and we're gonna die cut this hot foiled sending rainbows and sunshine piece. So we're gonna line that up just like that. Just kind of center it right over the sentiment. Then we'll hold it in place with some washi tape and then we can run that through the die cut machine and that's gonna be giving us our moving circle, the one that I decorated with the word front and the smiley face. Now we have the sending rainbows and sunshine sentiment. Now this moving circle is great with a sentiment on it, it's great with the scene on it. There's so many cool things you can do with it and we'll keep showing you more ideas as we go on with this video. So now I've die cut another moving circle that's just going to be plain. Then I'm going to take out the connector piece and once again we are die cutting that from some nice thin copy paper there. So I'm going to die cut one of those. And the next thing that we need to make our moving circle is going to be that tab. And for the tab, we're gonna use the nice thick 100 pound, 110 pound cardstock. And so we're gonna die cut that from some white cardstock. And so now we've got our front moving circle, our back moving circle, we have our connector piece, and also the tab. So for now, we're gonna take away the plain moving circle and the tab. We're just gonna put those aside because we're gonna be just working on the connector piece and our front moving circle. So here's that little connector piece with that score line that the die made for us. And we're gonna fold back along that score line. And I'm just gonna reinforce that fold with my finger. Then we're gonna take our design and we're gonna look at the back of it. And now we're gonna be attaching this connector piece. So we're gonna take our tape runner just like we did before and we're gonna cover this whole entire piece. We're making sure the entire thing has that tape runner all over it. Then we're gonna go ahead and take this piece and we're gonna be attaching it there right along that cut line, about centered in the cut line. You can see just like that. And so you're gonna want it to look exactly like this when you create your Give It A Whirls. Then we're going to press down there and now we can bring back our plain moving circle. And we're gonna cover that connector piece again with the tape runner. And we're gonna make sure that the entire thing is covered up. I got a little bit on my moving circle, but that's no big deal because it's dot runner. I can easily just take my finger and peel off any of it that might have gotten in the way. So I always like to check and make sure there's not any ex extra adhesive before I layer my other circle. And so you're just gonna line those, kind of stack them both up so they're perfectly lined up. And then we can go ahead and press down on that piece and then use our bone folder to reinforce that there just to make sure that they are adhered really, really well. Now we'll take our moving circle and we're going to flip it over so that we're looking at the front of it. We can see our design there and we're gonna be adding the tab to that. And you can see that little piece on the right side there that kind of flaps up. That's where we're gonna be adding this tab. So I'm gonna add my adhesive all along that little piece that kind of is gonna be the part that adheres. And you'll see you're gonna layer it right behind. It's got that curve that's gonna follow the curve of the circle and then the tab is gonna stick out just like that. Once you have those lined up, then you can just press down and make sure that that is nice and secure. The Give It A Whirl die comes with this awesome little decorative cover. And what I love about it is it has that little arrow in it. So it's gonna be telling the recipient what to do, that they have a fun, cool Give It A Whirl card in front of them. And so we're gonna die cut that out of some new cardstock. This is color is called Tide Pool and it's so pretty. And so I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back of that and layer that right on to the tab. And now my moving circle piece is all done. Oh, I am so excited about this card. And so now we're gonna start working on the back base piece and we're going to start decorating that. 
Now the trick to the back base piece is you want to decorate and then die cut. So decorate and then die cut. And that's what we're gonna do here. So here I have some of this awesome rainbow ever after paper. And on the back side of this paper, there's this really pretty yellow. And so we're gonna be cutting this down to about five by five or six by six inches. That's kind of the size of paper I like to work with as I design for my Give It A Whirl main base piece. So here we have this beautiful pattern paper and now I'm gonna take out the template and I'm gonna use some low tack tape to secure this in place. And what this template is going to do is it shows us the exact space to design in so that when you do your give it a whirl, the design is hidden behind that moving piece and you have that big surprise. And that's why I just love this template because it makes it so easy to design within this circular space. So right here we die cut one of those cute little hillsides that's included with the Give It A Whirl. And I die cut that out of some more new cardstock. This color is called Algae and it's so pretty. And so we're gonna layer some tape runner all over this piece. And then I'm just gonna kind of butt that up right against the edge of this template here. And that way I know I'm designing within that circle that's going to be covered up in the Give It A Whirl. That way it's an awesome surprise when you give it a whirl. So here we're gonna take out a brand new stamp set called Kangarific and these kangaroos are so super cute. And I went ahead and stamped and colored a die cut a bunch of images from this. I also die cut a tree from the Kangarific add-on. I love this little eucalyptus tree. And then we're going to take out the stamp set My Rainbow, which has a really great rainbow. And I went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut that too. Next, I'm gonna add some tape runner to the back of that little kangaroo and layer it into the mama kangaroo. And one thing to note is you wanna make sure you're always using tape runner or glue flat adhesive for this part. You don't want anything popped up because we're gonna have that moving circle that's gonna whirl over top of this. So here I'm just kind of playing around with my design, seeing what's gonna fit. And I wanna put this rainbow and tree in the background. So I'm gonna cover them all completely in adhesive because I wanna make sure they stick down really well. I'm gonna trim off a little bit of that tree because I wanna tuck it behind Behind this hill here. So I'm just using a little pokey tool here to lift up the hill a little bit since I had adhered that down so well to layer my beautiful tree right in the background. Then I'm taking here my mama kangaroo and kind of seeing how she's going to look with that rainbow, kind of layering the rainbow right behind her and then tucking the rainbow behind the grass to create this cute little scene. And I just think this is so sweet. Then I'm gonna take that other little kangaroo and we're gonna layer him onto the grass. Once again, covering him in nice flat adhesive like tape runner. And I'm gonna layer him into the grass just like this. And this scene is looking so cute already. Now the only thing it needs is something in that upper right corner. And I thought this little sentiment here that says, I love Rue so much would be adorable for this. So I'm just gonna cut that sentiment in half there, which you can do that with clear stamps. You can cut them apart so you can stack them or then put them back together if you want the sentiment to be a nice long sentiment. So you get lots of options that way. So I went ahead and picked that up with my block, inked it up with some black licorice ink, and now I'm gonna stamp right within that template that's gonna tell me exactly where to keep my whole design. Now that I have my design, I can go ahead and peel up that template. And the next thing we wanna do is we want to take one of these main base pieces. And in this case, I wanted to use the scalloped add-on. And so I'm gonna be using that one. And one thing I wanna make sure is that my cut line is going the same way as this one. And this cut line's going at about three o'clock, if you kind of think of that like a clock. So I'm gonna make sure that this one is at three o'clock as well. Now you could just eyeball this and kind of line it up with your image, but my favorite thing to do is to use the other part of the template. So this template here is really gonna give me something that I can go off around the entire circle of my design as a guide. So I love using the little interior part of the template like this because now I can just look around and make sure I have a nice even circle all the way around. And then I know that my die is in perfect placement and I can hold it in place with my washi tape. And then I can just remove that template it out of the way and then run it through the die cut machine. And the cool thing about this is this die is gonna be able to cut through not only the pattern paper that we have as the base, but all of those cute stamped and die cut images as well. And look how gorgeous this looks. I love the scene and I love that by using the template, we made sure to hide everything behind what's going to be our moving piece. So here is this piece and now we're gonna bring back our moving piece and look how cute this is gonna look. I love the kangaroo surprise inside.
So before we create the give it a whirl mechanism, we're gonna work on the card base here. So here is some beautiful paper from the six by six pad for Rainbow Ever After. We're gonna cut that down to a standard size and also take out a standard size card base, five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm just gonna add some tape runner all over that and then layer this gorgeous pattern paper on top. And now we have our card base ready to go so that we can layer our give it a whirl on top. So here we've got our two whirl pieces. We're gonna put the card base aside just for now. And just like we did before, we're gonna take our two pieces and we're gonna flip them over. Once we have them flipped over, we are gonna take that tab right there and we're gonna feed it through the cut line in the main base piece. Once we feed that through the cut line, then we're gonna use our fingers to help guide it through. Remember, we have to teach the paper how to give it a whirl. So the first time that you're bringing it through, especially when you've die cut uh, cute little things like the kangaroo there, you really just kind of help guide it. So you can see there, I wanted to show you in real time what it kind of looks like to guide it through the first time. And then I always like to kind of bring it all the way around and then bring it back again. So now we're gonna bring it around. Once again, we're training our paper what to do. And then as we do that, you'll see it keeps working better and better. And now we're gonna bring it back through one more time. And then once we do that, we can start to work on adding our adhesive to the back. So we're gonna take this whole piece, making sure the front is showing, and then we're gonna flip it over to the back. And we're gonna be using those foam strips again. And once again, we're gonna take the top edge of the foam strip and we're gonna line that top edge up with that stitching line going all the way around our give it a whirl mechanism. So here I've got another piece of foam strip lining up the top edge of the foam strip with that stitching line. And now we'll need about a half of a foam strip here to finish up our foam circle. And we're just gonna layer that right on top and then just trim off any of the excess. Then we can peel up the liner paper of all of the adhesive. Once I peel up the liner paper, I always like to check and make sure none of the foam is touching that moving circle. And if it is, I just push it back with my fingers a little bit. And now I have a give it a whirl mechanism that's ready to add to my card. So now we're gonna take this, I'm gonna center it and kind of put it up towards the top of the card. And then once I have it in perfect placement, we can press it down. And now we have an awesome give it a whirl mechanism. And look how cute that is. I mean, look at this kangaroo. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh my goodness, I love it so much. Now the last thing I wanted to do was kind of have a little bit of a hint of the kangaroo scene that they're gonna see on the front of the card. So I went ahead and took out some more of that Tide Pool cardstock, and then I'm gonna take out one of the sentiments here that says hop and buy to say from the Kangarific stamp set, and I'm gonna stamp that in some Blue Jay ink on that beautiful paper. Then I'm gonna take this wavy banner here and just line that right up with the sentiment. Once I have it lined up, I can hold it in place with some washi tape or low tack tape, and then we can run it through the die cut machine Machine, and we're gonna have this really pretty wavy sentiment and I love that it's at, out of the same color cardstock as the pull tab it kind of all coordinates the whole thing together and then what I'm gonna do is add one more little kangaroo and I think this is so cute and what's fun about this is it could say hopping by to say sending rainbows and sunshine or when you open the card up, it's gonna say hop and buy to say, and then you have the surprise, I love Rue so much. So how fun is that? I These are just so magic. I'm smiling just watching this. It's so cute and so adorable. They are so easy and so much fun to create. I love these so very, very much. And here I wanted to show you, I love it so much, I had to make another one. And I made one with the 12 by 12 paper with it. So there's kind of the difference in scale there. And I love that they both look really fun, just kind of depending on what you're feeling. If you want just the purples or if you want the whole rainbow you can mix and match the different scales of paper and look how fun that is oh my gosh I love it so much and now that we have learned how to put together a give it a whirl we've made an awesome card with it using the template I want to show you how to use that template in a totally different way so what we're going to do here is we're going to trim down some cardstock to that five by five inches again and we're going to be using the template this time but we're going to be using it for both stamping and also a fun inking technique so what I like to do with the template when I'm going to do some cool inking techniques with it is I just make a little mark there right along the template with my pen so that I'm going to be able to line up this template again multiple times as I do my design. So really quick and easy to do. You can just take your pen and kind of run it along the edge of the template and make sure that you have a little marking at each corner and that's going to help you line up the template anytime you need to again. 
So now we'll hold those in place with some low tack tape and we're gonna use one of my favorite stamp sets of all time. And this is called Upon a Star because I love constellations and my son loves stars and planets so much. I just had to make him a cool card with this. So here you can see I've taken out a bunch of constellations from both Upon a Star and also Superstar. And I'm gonna use the template again as a guide for my design, kind of like we did with the kangaroo die cuts. But this time I'm gonna use it as a guide as to where to place all my stamps. So I'm just gonna layer my stamps on to a design that I think is gonna look really pretty, like this really gorgeous kind of night sky. So you'll see there I'm just kind of moving the different constellations around and I have that little template, almost like a little viewfinder window telling me exactly where my design is going to go so that it's hidden by the moving circle before you actually give it a whirl. So I think this is looking pretty good here with all of these constellations. So I'm gonna take a big block and I'm just gonna press it down and pick up all of these stamps and now that's gonna be perfect for stamping them. I'm gonna stamp them in some clear embossing ink because we're gonna be doing some heat embossing with this. So I'm gonna make sure to cover all of those constellations really well, and then I'm gonna stamp them right back over my template. And so now the template is acting like a mask because it's making sure that I only have stamped those stars within that circle shape. Now I need to sprinkle on my heat embossing powder. So I need to remove the template for now, but it's okay because we added those little pen marks. And so we're just gonna remove all of that post-it note tape there and then remove the template to do some heat embossing. And that's because we're gonna be doing a cool emboss resist technique. So we're gonna sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder, which is going to stick to that awesome clear embossing ink we stamped our constellations with. And then we can heat it up with the heat tool and you'll see that we have these beautiful, nice, bright, white, shiny stars. Next, we need to add our template back on because it's gonna help us do this awesome inking. And because we have the pen marks, you can see easy peasy, it lines up just like that. And we're gonna bring some washi tape into this again, and we're just gonna go ahead and hold this whole template in place. And that, once again, is gonna kind of function as a stencil now instead of just a template because it's gonna let us do some inking over the stars that's just gonna be within that kind of circle viewfinder area that's gonna be covered up by the moving piece of the Give It A Whirl. So here I'm using some Distress Oxide inks. I have Worn Lipstick, Wilted Violet, and Faded Jeans. And I love this combo for kind of a magical night sky. And so you'll see I'm going back and forth between the colors where they overlap to kind of create a nice gradient. Now we'll bring in the darker blue color and then go back in again with the purple to just kind of blend it all in. And I just think this is so pretty. It's so striking. It just makes me smile. The next thing I'm gonna do is just take a dry towel here and I'm just gonna buff off those stars of any excess ink that might be on top of them. And now you can see they're really shining bright in our beautiful, magical night sky. So now we can remove this template, but I wanted my frame around this not to be white, but to be black, but that's okay because we can use the other part of the Give It A Whirl template. We're gonna layer this template piece right over top and then ink all around it so that it has kind of a black night sky around it and then our beautiful magical night sky in the beginning. So you could use something like some removable adhesive to hold this in place. I have one of these magnet stations here for stenciling, and this is a really great way to use, to hold this one in place as well. So I'm gonna put a bunch of these magnets on there, and you'll see I'll kind of move them around and use my fingers throughout creating this. But we're just gonna hold that in place, and it's gonna become a mask again that's going to protect our beautiful magical sky while we ink the outside in some black soot Distress Oxide ink. And you can see we're just gonna kind of keep moving the magnets around and keep inking around this whole thing so that we have this beautiful night sky around the magical sky. And then my favorite part, when you lift that up, I mean, oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> it's so pretty. So I'm gonna put this aside to dry. I let that dry for a bit, got a couple other things done, and now I can come back to die cutting it. So here, this time, we're gonna be using the main base piece from the Give It A Whirl, which is that cool circle shape. This time I don't need a template to help me line it up because I have that nice dark black circle all of the way around. So I'm using that as my guide to be able to line up my die. We'll hold it in place with some tape, run it through the die cut machine, and now you'll see that we have a beautiful main base piece with that gorgeous ink sky on it. Now we're gonna work on our moving circle piece. So I'm gonna take that circle and we're gonna die cut some black cardstock with this. And then we're gonna go ahead and start doing our design. In this case, I want to have a sentiment on the front again. So I'm gonna be using a sentiment from Upon a Star that we are gonna be stamping and white heat embossing onto this cardstock. 
Now, one thing I want to note about the moving circle is you can't put die cuts on it because it's the part that's moving through that thin cut line. So you could stamp a scene on it. You can stamp a sentiment on it. You can hot foil on it. You could use beautiful pattern paper. So many cool things, but you won't put die cuts on top of this one, but you can put die cuts on the main one. So that is a little tip and trick here. So now that we've stamped in that clear embossing ink, we can go ahead and sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder and then heat it up with our heat tool so we have a nice bright white shiny sentiment that'll coordinate with the white heat embossing that we did with the stars that is gonna be on the other side of the Give It A Whirl. So once we heat that up, we're gonna go ahead and add some white paint splatters here. This is some Copic white, but any white acrylic paint would do. And I thought it would look really pretty to have just a little bit of stars kind of like way in the background on this black cardstock piece. And so so by just kind of tapping my paintbrush and making some splatters, I think it looks so pretty and makes this feel so special. So now I'm gonna set this piece aside to dry. And once my paint is fully dry, we can start working on the rest of our moving piece mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut a plain piece. This one could actually be out of white cardstock or any color of cardstock, but I happen to have my black cardstock there. And then here I'm going to take out a piece of copy paper again, printer paper, and we're going to die cut the connector piece. And then I'm also going to die cut a tab out of the 100 pound cardstock and then a little decorative piece out of some gorgeous sparkle cardstock to go along with our night sky theme. I'm gonna put the tab pieces and the plain moving piece over to the side and work on the connector piece. So we're gonna fold along that score line just like we've done before. And then we're gonna add some tape runner covering this whole entire piece, just like that. Once we have that piece covered, we could flip this over to the back and we're gonna be laying that right along that edge of the cut line, about centered in the cut line. And so here you'll see, I'm just gonna press that down right along the edge once I have it lined up. And once it's right there, kind of centered and right along the edge of that cut line, I can press down. Then you'll see I'm using my finger to rub off any extra adhesive that I have. I even opened up the piece and just making sure that I didn't have too much. And that's what I like about the dop runner or the tape runner is that I can easily rub away any of the extra with my finger. So once I have that piece all cleaned up, I can go ahead and bring back the other plain piece and then we're also going to be adding some more adhesive. So we're gonna add some more adhesive to that connector piece, covering the whole entire thing with our tape runner. You can see there once again, I'm making sure to remove any excess adhesive. I have a tendency to just put too much there, but it's super easy because you can just rub it right away. And then we're gonna stack these two pieces up together and they're really easy to line up together because of that cut line. Once they're lined up, then we can press down and that's gonna attach the connector piece. And so they're both connected now. I'm just gonna press down to reinforce it. And now we can flip it over to the front and we're gonna be adding our tab on that right-hand side. So here you can see, I'm gonna add some tape runner onto that tab piece, the curved part. And that curved part is gonna line up with the circle. So we'll just layer that right behind. And once it's all lined up, we can just press down to secure that in place. Then we're gonna add the decorative cover, which I love because it has the little arrow that's gonna tell the recipient what they need to do. And so we're just gonna add some tape runner onto that piece and then layer that right on top and that little arrow is gonna peek through just like that. Next, we're gonna bring in our main base piece, which is that gorgeous inking that we did on it. And we're gonna flip both of these over. We're gonna take that tab piece and we're gonna feed that tab piece through the cut line. Once we've fed it through, we'll flip it over to the front and then we're gonna use our fingers to kind of pull the piece through just like that, training the paper how to move. Then we're gonna go back around and you'll see that we're kind of teaching that paper how to give it a whirl. And then we're gonna bring it right back around again so that we're looking at the front of the moving piece, just like that. Now it's time to work on the card base so we have a piece to attach our Give It A Whirl to. And so we're gonna die cut this with this beautiful dotted moon and stars backdrop. We're gonna die cut some more black cardstock and then we're gonna take out some more of that sparkle cardstock that we use for the tab piece and we're gonna layer that behind so that we have these beautiful kind of sparkly stars and moons peeking through. So I'm gonna add a bunch of glue tube all around this backdrop and then layer that right down on to that sparkle. And look at that, oh my goodness, it's just so pretty. And this is gonna be kind of our starry background for our Give It A Whirl mechanism. Next, we're gonna take a standard card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter and we'll add some tape runner to that and then we can layer this whole piece on top. 
Now for this give it a whirl mechanism, since I don't really have a scene or anything on the inside, I wanted to add a little bit of a scene on to this piece here. So I've taken out my largest stitched rectangle and we're gonna die cut some of this black shimmer cardstock. And then we're gonna die cut that with a simple grassy hillside. So we're gonna line that up at the bottom there and then we'll hold that in place with some tape and run it through the die cut machine. And now we'll have this beautiful little grassy hillside to add to the bottom of the card. And I'm just gonna add that on with the, some tape runner as well. And I think all of the shades of black and gray and silver are just so pretty for this nighttime scene. So now that we have a card base, we can finally finish our mechanism for the awesome Give It A Whirl. So we're gonna flip it over and look at the back. And now we're gonna be taking out some of these foam strips here and we're gonna line up the top of the foam strip with that stitching line, just like we've done on the other ones we've created. So we're gonna layer this right around and continue all the way around the circle. Then we'll peel up the liner paper on all of the pieces. And this is when I like to make sure that none of the foam is touching the moving circle. And so I'll just push back the foam with my finger just to make sure everything is in the clear. And once that's all done, we can take our whole piece and flip it over and layer it onto our card base. We'll press down to secure it in place. And then my very favorite part is I'm going to give it a whirl and see this beautiful color surprise. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, ah, I love it. I'm telling you, these are so much fun to make. I can't tell you what a blast I'm having making all these cards. And so now we're gonna take out some images from the Superstar stamp set right here. And I just thought it'd be fun to add a little scene to the bottom of the card. So it's almost like we're looking through the telescope that the mouse is looking through. I just think that's really fun. And so we're gonna layer this little mouse and telescope into our beautiful metallic grass here. And I think there's just something about this that feels so special and so cute. I love it so much. And now, of course, we've got to give it a whirl again. And you'll see, look at this surprise. I mean, this would just make anyone's day. It would just make them smile. Oh, I love it so much. It's just so cool and such a fun way to do it. The other thing I love about the color surprise concept is this is a starry version, but you can imagine doing that with a blue sky or an ocean scene. Oh my gosh. I mean, how gorgeous would that be? So there are so many cool ways to use the color surprise concept in all sorts of different scenes from nighttime to daytime to ocean to anything in your imagination. So now I thought it would be fun to create a give it a whirl that has a scene on the front and then a scene as you whirl it that's a little bit different. So right here, we're gonna start off with a five inch by five inch square again, and we're gonna be doing some stenciling on this. So here I'm gonna take this uh, simple hillside stencil and I'm just gonna kind of layer it so that it's kind of towards the bottom third of my piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna take some dough ink here and I'm just gonna ink a nice little kind of dirt ground because I'm gonna be creating a veggie happy give it a whirl card. So I'm starting on the stencil and working off and you'll see I'm just building up the color and I have have it darker towards the top and then lighter towards the bottom. Then to give the look of dirt, I'm splattering some white paint here, just little tiny splatters all around and I feel like that gives it a nice texture. Once that's done, I can peel up my stencil here and now you can see this gorgeous hill that we have formed. Now, the thing I love about this stencil is the top of it is a mask. So I'm gonna lay this down to cover up my ground as I create my sky. And to make the sky, I'm going to be using the cloudy stencil, which is my favorite stencil of all time. I'm gonna be using it with some merman ink and you start on the stencil and then work off onto your cardstock. And each side has kind of like a different shape of clouds on there. So I like to take my stencil and then just rotate it to another side to change the shape of the clouds. And then I ink on the stencil and then off. And then I flip it and rotate again and I'm gonna work all the way down until I get to my hill Then I can peel up that stencil mask and look at this beautiful scene that we've created so now I'm gonna bring the Give It A Whirl template and use that as a guide as how I want my scene to look like when I'm gonna open up my Give It A Whirl. So I'm kind of looking through this little viewfinder here. I'm gonna remove the little centerpiece there and now you can see how cute this is with our clouds and then our dirt so now that I've got the template there, I can start to design my scene. So here I've taken out some cute images from Veggie Happy and the Veggie Happy add-on. I went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut a bunch of those. I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back of our soil patch here and then also to all of our cute little veggies. And I'm gonna tuck them in the little kind of lines of dirt there. The die cuts out those little lines so that you can tuck the veggies inside, which I think is just the cutest look. 
Then once I have all those veggies tucked inside, we can go ahead and start to layer this into the scene. So this is what the template is so great for because it really gives you that exact shape that you need to be looking for to create these adorable little scenes that you're gonna have on your Give It A Whirl. So here you can see I'm layering everybody on there. And remember, when we layer things on for our Give It A Whirl, this is for the main base piece, we use only flat adhesive, no foam squares. So we're gonna layer all of these guys on, and then I'm gonna do some stamping as well with the Veggie Happy add-on stamp set. There's these really cute little sentiments in it, and so I'm gonna stamp those up in the sky. So I'm gonna stamp, it's your birthday, and then let us celebrate, which is my favorite one, and then also have an upbeat day, which are all really, really cute for a birthday card. So now that our scene has all been created, we can go ahead and remove that template because we have everything in perfect place. Then it's time to line up our Give It A Whirl scalloped add-on Bain base piece. And just like we did before, I like to use that little interior piece of the template to help me line up my piece because it really gives me the exact size of the circle and then I can just line up that template by looking around and creating an even circle all the way around. So I'm gonna hold this all in place with some cute little themed washi tape there. And once I have that held well in place, I'll take this whole thing and we're gonna go ahead, remove that template, and then we're gonna run this through the die cut machine. And this is gonna create the perfect back piece for your Give It A Whirl. And oh my goodness, look how cute this scene is. Now you'll see that I have my die. I've left it in that piece of cardstock. I'm gonna show you why I did that in just a second here. So here we have the moving circle piece and I've die cut that from some white cardstock. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this piece back and just line it up right over top. The reason that I'm doing this is this is a little tip and trick so that you can make your hill that you have in the back look exactly like the hill you have in the front. I'm just gonna line it up just like that with that awesome stencil. Now before I start stenciling, I wanted to do a little bit of stamping. And reminder that when we're decorating the awesome moving piece, we only want to have the flat stamping or heat embossing or maybe some hot foiling, things like that. We don't want any dimension from any kind of die cuts and that'll keep it moving really smoothly in your wheel. So I went ahead and stamped directly onto my moving circle piece and now I'm just adding a little bit of color with my Copic markers and now I'm gonna come back in and line up that stencil. So that's what I love about keeping that little piece with the die in it is that it's a really easy way to line up your stencil so that the hill will be the same on the back piece as it is on the front piece. So here we're gonna just line that up and then once it's lined up, I can just go ahead and peel this part off and move it and then just flap that whole stencil right back. And now we're gonna have that hill in perfect placement and we're gonna create our little dirt hill here the same way that we did on the other card. So we're gonna use some dough ink and just ink right over that hill, keeping it darker towards the top and lighter towards the bottom. And then I'm also gonna take out some of that white paint there and just tap it off of my paintbrush to create the little splatters in the dirt just to give it some nice texture. Then just like we did before, we're gonna lift up this stencil and we're gonna use it as a mask by layering it over the hill that we just created. Then we're gonna take out our Merman ink and that cloudy stencil again, and we're gonna start on the stencil and off, rotating between the different sides of the stencil to create lots of cool, different shaped clouds all in our sky. Then we can peel up our stencil mask and this is looking so gorgeous. And I love that it's like the little sprout to the whole garden scene that we created earlier. Next, I'm gonna take a sentiment from the Veggie Happy stamp set and I'm gonna curve the sentiment onto my block so that it matches the curve of the moving circle piece. Once I have those in perfect place, I'm gonna stamp them out in some black licorice ink right at the top. And so this is going to be my sentiment and then it's going to reveal into the whole scene with all of those cute little tiny sentiments. I just think it's super, super fun. And now here you can see the two pieces together. So how cute is this? So this is a different style where we've got a scene on the front and then a scene as you whirl it around. Then I love that those hills line up perfectly because we used our little die cut piece as a template. Now we're gonna put our main base piece aside and we're gonna work on our moving piece. So I've die cut that moving circle again from some plain white cardstock. We're gonna die cut the connector piece from that thin printer copy paper again. Then we're gonna die cut our awesome little tab here out of some 100 pound cardstock. And then I'm gonna die cut the little arrow piece here out of this new algae cardstock that's such a pretty green color that's gonna go great with our scene. 
So we're going to put aside the uh, extra circle there and the tab pieces, and we're going to work just on our main front circle and our connector piece. So the connector piece, we've got that little score line, so we're going to fold that back again. And then I just reinforce the fold with my finger. We're going to flip our decorated piece over, and then we're going to add some tape runner onto that connector piece using this awesome dot runner. And we're going to cover the whole thing so that the whole thing has adhesive all over it. Then we're going to take this piece and we're going to line it right up to the edge of that cut line there. And we're going to center it, just kind of eyeball it right there. So you'll see I'm just kind of eyeballing it and lining it up right there with that cut line. Then I always like to press down to secure it. And then I always look to see if I got any extra adhesive around there. So I kind of lift that piece up and I did have a little extra adhesive. So I can just peel that up and then I can just use my finger to rub away any of the extra of that dot runner. And so it's nice and easy to do really, really quick. And then we're going to take that dot runner out again and we're going to be adding more adhesive onto that piece. There you can see I'm just making sure that there is no extra adhesive on there. I went a little crazy on that piece. So the next thing we need is our moving circle piece, and now we're going to add that adhesive onto there. So we're going to layer the adhesive all over, just like that. And then we're going to take this piece and we're going to stack it right on top. And it's easy to line up because of that cut line, and then we can just press down to secure these pieces together. Then you'll see that we have the piece on the right there. It's the one that kind of can freely move. That's where we're going to be adding our tab. And the tab's going to go behind that decorated piece. So we're just going to layer some of the adhesive behind that piece right there. And then we're going to go ahead and layer that piece right behind this moving circle. So it's right there behind the decorated piece. You can see how I've lifted up that flap. Then once we have that piece all attached, we're going to go ahead and add our decorative piece that has the arrow that lets the recipient know what to do, and we're going to layer that right over top there. And I love that pop of green on this moving piece. Now we're going to bring back that main base piece that we decorated earlier, and of course the moving piece too, and we're going to flip them over so that we're looking at the back of both of them. Then we're going to take that little piece with the tab on it, and we're going to feed that through the cut line of the main base piece. Once you've fed it through, we're going to flip it over and look at the front, and this is the part where we're going to use our fingers to slowly guide this piece through the give it a whirl, and we're kind of training the paper what to do. So the first time you'll guide it through kind of slowly, and then we're going to try going the other way. You'll see a little bit faster, but still slow. And then now we're going to bring it back so that we're seeing the front again. And how cool is that? And I love how those hills are lining up. It looks awesome. Now before we start adding the foam and creating the whole mechanism, we're going to go ahead and create a card base. So here we're going to take out some of this fruit salad paper, and this green gingham is just gorgeous. And then we're going to take out a stitched square here, and we're going to make a four and a half inch square card. And a square shaped card is a really fun shape for Give It A Whirl cards, and I like the unexpected shape too. I think that would just really kind of make someone's day. So I'm going to take a four and a half inch square card base, and then layer this square right on top. And look how gorgeous that looks with that green gingham. Then we're going to bring this awesome give it a whirl back and we're going to start adding our foam strips. So once again we're going to layer the foam strips where the top of the foam strip is going to line up with that stitching line and we're just going to keep working our way all around the circle. So we're lining up the foam strip with that top stitching line and then we'll take our last piece and then once we reach the end of the circle here we'll just trim off any of the excess and then we can start to work on peeling up the liner paper. Once I have all of the liner paper peeled, I always like to make sure that none of the foam is touching my moving circle. And I'll just take my fingers and kind of roll it back just slightly in case any of it is touching. And so I just kind of work my way around and check it out. And it's looking pretty good. So now we're ready to put it on our card and we're gonna center it in this square shaped card, which I think is such a cute look. And we're just gonna add that right on top. Once we have it in perfect placement, we can press down to secure it. And now we're gonna have an amazing, oh my goodness, look at this, give it a roll. I can't, it's adorable. I just love giving it a whirl, what can I say? <laughs> it's just so cute and so sweet. And I love the idea of this little scene with the little plant and the sentiment and then the big garden underneath with the extra little sentiments. I mean, it's just so cute and so sweet and so happy. It's so much fun to make and they're even more fun to give. They are just adorable. Now next up, I wanted to share a little tip with you. 
So we've been making all of these cards where that little piece there is at kind of at three o'clock, if you imagine this like a clock. So you can see here our cards that we've been creating, we have it at three o'clock. That's just the way that I really like to do it. But you can actually do anything in your imagination with this. So you could have the angle of your pull tab go all sorts of different directions. It could be 130, it could be noon. You can even go on the left side. I mean, you can do anything that you would like that would fit your design or whatever your visual preference is. So I wanted to show you a sample of a card where we did it kind of at this like 130 kind of time, which I think is a really, really cute place to place it. So here you can see it's another Veggie Happy card. So it's a nice little comparison and you can see what it looks like like when you have the tab at like a three o'clock or maybe more at an angle. All of them work great. It's totally just what you want for your design. And here you can see, look how fun that is. So it's a super, super adorable design with a fun pattern paper sky, and it's got that great angle on there. I also like that it's a similar card, but instead of having to use stenciling, we use pattern paper and then a fun die cut hill that's included with these awesome Give It A World dies. So I like that there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And on the front piece, we used our markers to color a hill instead of a stencil. So there are so many cool and different ways that you can decorate all of these pieces and I love that you can change the angle of that tab to be perfect for your design and look at these cards I mean oh my gosh is that just too much fun Next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team to show you guys. And this first one by Elena is so cute and sweet. And as you give it a whirl, you get the fun surprise of this adorable little bunny in the carrot car. Is this not the cutest thing you've seen? I just love the design and I love the frame around the edge of her card. Here, Maureen shows us that you can add your Give It A Whirl to any shaped card, and this is a slimline card, and as you give it a whirl, you get that super cute scene below. I think this is just so sweet and fun. Tammy blew me away by thinking of a record for the Give It A Whirl. She decorated the front like a record, and as you open it, look how amazing this is. You get this cute little scene. I just love this so much. Now here, Grace also had the idea to add it to her slimline card, and she helped it mix into the scene by adding the stenciling that coordinates with her background. And how fun is it when you give it a whirl and you get that super cute garden scene? This card by Megan is so much fun. I love all of those beautiful blue clouds and the unicorns, and then the fun sentiment as you give it a whirl is just so adorable and sweet. I love that the give it a whirl can work with any of the stamp sets in your stash. This card by Shari is amazing. She hand drew that earth, oh my gosh, and as you spin that little rocket around, you get the really cute sentiment. So I love that you could add little stamped images to your pull tab, that is so much fun. This card by Yanea is so adorable. I love the happy Easter sentiment on the front, and then as you spin it, you get this super cute little die cut bunny that I think is just absolutely adorable. Here, I love the idea of using this with an ocean scene, and Audrey did just that. She's got her adorable sentiment on the front, and then her awesome shark with the dana dana inside. Oh my gosh, it's just so gorgeous. And then Callie created such a beautiful, awesome unicorn card, and on the front she has her fun scene, and on the inside she has her sentiment. And I think that is a really, really cool way to use this Give It A Whirl, and oh my goodness, we cannot wait to see all of your Give It A Whirl cards, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.